Hi, welcome back. So we started our unit on thermodynamics yesterday with the what's up duck video, cooking a little bit of duck there with Alton Brown. And now today we're going to start our notes on the different temperature scales. So first, there's a quick review up at the top. I want you to pause the video, use the word bank that's down here underneath it uh, to help you It'll pop up in a second. Y'all know. Um, use the word bag down there at the bottom to help you fill in the blanks. Okay, pause it. Do it. All right, welcome back. Here we go. There are two main types of energy, potential and kinetic. The only reason potential goes first is because that line is a bit longer. So it doesn't really matter if you wrote kinetic and then potential. If you wrote kinetic here, potential here. Oh. Heat energy, known as thermal energy is a form of kinetic energy. It is the movement of the atoms and or molecules inside a substance. And again, atoms and molecules are technically interchangeable, but that line is shorter. So that's why it goes there. All right. Make sure you got that. Pause it if you need to. I'm clearing it and moving on. All right, so if I said to you, today's high temperature is 25 degrees, what would you wear? Write it on the line. Don't think about it too much. What would you wear? No wrong answer here except for leaving it blank. Okay? All right. Of course, it would depend on which temperature scale you are using. So the English um, system of measurement, so the, the one that we use, uses Fahrenheit. And 25 degrees would be very cold. It would be below freezing. So freezing in Fahrenheit is, right, 32 degrees. So 25 is going to be below freezing. Like you would need to not only wear a coat, you would probably need, well, I mean, if you were just going like from the house to the car or whatever, that's different. But if you were going to be out in it, you would probably need like thermal underwear. Like you would need layers to keep yourself warm. Now, the metric system of measurement uses Celsius, and I chose 25 in particular because 25 is such an odd, uh, it ends up being such an odd thing because 25 for Celsius, it's warm. Like, we're talking like hot, warmer than room temperature, like in the 70s, high 70s. So 25 degrees would be warm. Not only would you not need a coat, um, you probably would be able to get away with shorts and a tank top. Like, at the very least, shorts and a t-shirt. Like, it's going to be a nice, comfy day. Um, so, 25 in Fahrenheit, below freezing, cold. 25 in Celsius, warm. Like, in the 70s, summer day. So crazy, right? Anyway. All right, get that written down. I'm clearing it. And remember, anytime through these, pause the video to write the stuff down. I'm going to go faster in these videos than I do in class. Because in the video, you can pause it. And I'm not trying to have a 50-minute long video. You feel me, right? Okay. So, heat and temperature are not quite the same thing. So, heat is the transfer of that thermal energy from one substance to another, from one body to another. So, like Alton was talking about, he said thermodynamics is the study of uh, heat that the heat being transferred from one body to another. So that's that's what it, what it is. So heat is transfer. So if you think about it, I'm going to heat up some soup on the stove. What are you doing? You are transferring heat from the stove to the soup. I'm going to heat up some soup in the microwave. You are transferring energy from the microwave to the soup to warm it up. So heating up something is to transfer thermal energy from one thing to another. Temperature is a measurement. It's a measure of the average particle energy. Oh, the average. Oh, kinetic energy. My bad. Let's be a minute. The average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. So you know that when you're sick, you have a fever. Why do you have a fever? Because the particles in your body are literally moving faster, trying to kill whatever it is that's making you sick. So you have a fever. 
of an elevated temperature. Your particles are literally moving faster. So temperature is the measure of your particle motion. Now, when you take something's temperature, you're getting an average of all the particles inside of the substance. So heat is the transfer of thermal energy. <coughs> And temperature is the measure of average particle motion. Let's add average down in there. All right, pause it. I'm clearing it. All right, so what are the temperature scales that you've heard of? Write them down on that line. Okay, all right, of course. There are three commonly used temperature scales. And they are Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. Now, Fahrenheit, of course, you have heard of. That's the one that we use here in the U.S. And then there's a few other little countries that use it. You're supposed to know the freezing point and the boiling point of water in Fahrenheit and Celsius by now. So tell me, what's the freezing point in Fahrenheit? What's that number we're magically waiting for the weatherman to say when we want it to snow? Right, 32. And what about boiling? That one's a little harder to remember. Good job, 212. All right, so this one should be the easy one, right? So Celsius is used everywhere else in the world and in science. So even in science, in, si in the US, we use Celsius. So this was the easy one to remember. What's freezing, right? And boiling, of course, because it's easy to remember, 0, 100. So 32 Fahrenheit, 212 Fahrenheit is freezing and boiling, 0 and 100, freezing and boiling in Celsius. And that scale is really only used in physics. Uh, people who study thermodynamics, people who study how heat transfers from one body to another. Uh, thermodynamicists are the ones who actually use Kelvin. And Kelvin is interesting because um, we are we use it as a scale that has no negatives and um, we use it trying to get to absolute zero, which we'll talk more about in just a minute. Um, we'll talk more about all these scales in just a minute. But um, Kelvin, is whatever your Celsius number is, and then you add 273. So if zero Celsius is freezing point of water, if we add 273 to zero, then we get the freezing point of water in Kelvin. And notice that it's not degrees because Kelvin is not a degreed scale, it's a derived scale. So Fahrenheit and Celsius are degreed scales. Again, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and then Kelvin is derived from the degreed scale Celsius. So that's why you don't have a little degree symbol. And then 100 plus 273 would be 373. So uh, boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin. All right, get that written down. Pause it if you need to. I'm moving on. All right, so this is one of those times that I have learned that it's better to just go ahead and write these notes down and then I'll explain it. Because right now when I write it down, when we write down the notes, at least some of you might get it. Some of you are probably gonna go, what? And others are going to be completely lost. It's okay. Just get the notes written down. And then I promise I will talk you through it. All right. So where do the degrees come from? All right. So on both scales, the numbers that are assigned to boiling point and freezing point are taking into account. The interval between the two numbers is divided into equal parts, giving us degrees. So in Fahrenheit, the boiling point of water is 32 and the freezing point is 212, which is a difference of 180. So 212 minus 32 is 180. So that, that interval, that circle, is divided into 180 equal pieces. In Celsius, the boiling point zero. <laughs> I know I got these backwards too, didn't I? Man, I'm just firing on all cylinders today, aren't I? All right, y'all are gonna fix this. 212 minus 32, there we go, fixed it. And then boiling is 100 and freezing is zero. So that, of course, is 100. So that means that circle is divided into 100 equal parts. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Pause real quick, get that written down because I'm about to erase it so I can write on top of it. Okay, so we said that, you know what? The degree symbol is a circle. 
Well, the degree symbol is a circle because degrees are from a circle. So we say that we start with um, a zero here, the freezing point. And then we have our circle and go through all of the temperatures of water between zero and 100. And then the other end of our circle is 100. Now, of course, we acknowledge that zeros, I mean, the circles are infinite and they don't really have a start and a stop, but you got to pick up your line somewhere. You got to stop it somewhere when you're actually drawing a circle. So that's what we have here. So for the Celsius scale, we take that circle and divide it into 100 parts because it's zero to 100. So I am not going to divide this into 100 parts and I'm definitely not going to be able to do it equally because I'm not a robot, but we're going to pretend that I just divided that into 100 equal parts. So we're pretending that that's 100 equal parts. Over here, we've got 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's the same thing, right? Zero Celsius is the same as 32 Fahrenheit. So it's the same circle. It goes through all of the temperatures of water between the start and the finish. And then we end at 212, which is boiling of water. So it's the same circle. We started and ended with boiling. We started and ended with boiling. The problem is that when you, on this scale, when you subtract 212 from 32, you get 180. So now this circle has to be divided into 180 equal pieces. And that's almost double, right? Because two would be double of one, right? 200 would be double and we're almost there. So there's almost twice as many pieces in this circle as there are in the other circle. So each degree is less. So one degree here is equal to 1.8 degrees over here. So one little degree is one little space here, but it doesn't cover as much space as one degree covers over here because there's more slices to the circle. So we have 180 pieces over here in our Fahrenheit circle, but we only have 100 pieces over here in our Celsius circle. So that means we've got a ratio of 1.8 to one. So for every degree in Celsius, there's almost two degrees in Fahrenheit. And that's why they don't quite match up in some places where 25 can be warm in Celsius and below freezing in Fahrenheit. Now, what's stupid crazy is that there are some temperatures that are exactly the same in both. I mean, think about it. If you've got a gear of two different sides, don't they match two, two different sizes? Don't they match up at some point? Right. Eventually, the two lines match up. So they do match up at some point. But those are your two scales. That's where the degrees comes from, like degrees of a circle. That's literally what we did. We took the circle and divided up into equal pieces and made degrees. If you want to write that down on, you know, drawing paper or something, you can, but you don't have to. First, I have to be able to erase it. All right, so now we figured out how to do that. So now how do we get it to Kelvin? You just add... 273 to the number. All right, so why is the number zero so important? Why is absolute zero so important? So um, experiments have led scientists to conclude that negative, oh, I guess 273. <laughs> why is the number 273 so important? Experiments have led scientists to conclude that negative 273 is the lowest temperature possible. So they've decided after testing and testing and testing that the lowest temperature ever conceivable possible is negative 273, three degrees Celsius. And so they called that temperature absolute zero. And at that temperature, no more energy can be removed from the substance. The particles are as still as they're going to be. If they got any more still, they're just going to fall apart. So zero on the Kelvin scale is equal to absolute zero. All right, pause it if you need to. I'm clearing it and moving on. So this means that there is zero motion of the particles inside the substance. So how is a measurement of zero on Fahrenheit or Celsius different than a measurement of zero on Kelvin? because in zero Fahrenheit or zero Celsius, it is cold, but there is still particle motion. You can still remove more heat. So 
zero K equals zero motion. So that's the difference. Again, pause it if you need to. All right, now we got thermal energy. So we had heat, which is the transfer of energy. We had temperature, which is the measure of the average particle motion. Now we've got thermal energy. And thermal energy is the total energy of all of the particles in a substance. So not just taking the temperature of the substance, but adding up the total energy of all the particles. So even if two samples of matter have the same temperature, they may not have the same amount of thermal energy. If I've got a big vat of coffee and I pour a, a cup out, for a minute they are the same temperature. But eventually that big pot of coffee has far more thermal energy than that cup and the cup cools down, 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 down. So they were the same temperature, but they had differing amounts of thermal energy and that's why one of them cooled faster. By the same logic, you can have two things that have vastly different temperatures. Take that same cup of coffee and dump it on an iceberg that's the size of this building. You're not going to melt that iceberg. You're going to have brown slushy. You're going to have coffee slushy because that it's going to freeze because that iceberg has far more thermal energy than that cup of coffee did. Even though it was colder, it was bigger, so it had more thermal energy. So even if, you, if it has more thermal energy, even though the temperature is colder. So even though the temperature is colder on that iceberg, it's still got more thermal energy. Now this yesterday's video is actually a video that we're gonna watch today in class. So in class, what I'm gonna do is pause this and then play the Bill Nye video. I will put a link to it in the folder so that y'all can watch it hopefully. Um, but in the past, I've had trouble with those videos being unlocked, uh, being viewable. That's the bell. So the example was the ice swan in case you did get a chance to check it out. All right. Y'all have a lovely day. Make good decisions. Bye.